Oh, that sounds so lovely. Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. I'm here with the Kawaii ES520. Now, this is one of two new Kawaii offerings, the ES520 and the ES920, which I don't have, but I hope to get one in here for review sometime in the future. But in the meantime, the ES520 is kind of a brand new offering. See, the ES920 replaces the Kawaii ES8. The Kawaii ES8 was made of metal, sturdy, solid, but it was heavy. So they came up with the ES920, which is a plastic case, has a, a lot more new features, and it's really nice. Now, the last Kawaii I reviewed before this was the ES110. I did that a few years back. The ES110 is very light, very portable, and it is the uh, introductory model in the ES series. So if you're looking for a piano and relatively inexpensive, the Kawaii ES110 is the way to go. Now the ES110, being what I just described it as, and the ES920 being basically the top of the line in the ES series, they didn't really have anything in the middle. That's where the ES520 comes in. And in that respect, that makes this pretty much their newest offering. Because it is a brand new board sitting somewhere between the ES110 and the ES920. And what it offers is just phenomenal. At only 32 pounds, this makes it probably one of the most ideal and portable pianists' piano. So if you are a pianist and you take these to solo gigs, this is your baby right here. If you're going to be gigging with a band, this also fills that as well. As long as you're okay with the 34 sounds that are included with this. There's only 34 sounds, so if you're looking for a whole plethora of sounds, you might want to consider the Kawaii MP7, or MP7SE, actually. But this one, wow. So currently, as of this video, the price is $1,199 US, $1,199 US dollars. It has a respectable 192 notes of polyphony. It does come in your choice of black or white. I like black. The sound chip is Kawai's progressive harmonic imaging uh, chip, and it sounds really good, as you just heard. You just heard one of the pianos, and it sounds really good. There are other pianos in here, and I'll get to that in a minute. And speaking of the other sounds that are in here, you've got the full multi-layer samples of the Kawai Shigeru SK Grand Piano and the EX Grand Piano. Those are concert grand pianos. They sound fabulous. Now, I already mentioned it's 32 pounds, but just so that you can get an idea of its dimensions to see if it's going to fit in your car or not, it probably will. Uh, it's... 52 and three quarters inches or 52.75 inches by 14.66 inches deep by 5.66 inches in height. The keys are triple sensor. They're graded. They're weighted. Uh, it doesn't have let off though. If you want let off, you can go to the ES920 where you can get that and a few more other uh, goodies in addition to what this has. But since let off is really something that's designed for a piano with physical strings, I found that I personally don't really need it. So this is, is perfect for me. Now the name of the key action that Kawhi has assigned to this is the RHC-2. RHC standing for Responsive Hammer Compact. And that's the reason that these dimensions are the way they are and not something humongous like the MP11SE where you've got the full 
length wooden key sticks and all that, but you're also going to pay for that in terms of size and weight. Not exactly portable. If you have a roadie, that would be great, but if you don't mind 70 pounds of piano and maybe another 30 pounds for a hard case, then by all means go for it. But if you're like most people, if you're like me and you value your back, <laughs> this is perfect, 32 pounds. Perfect. Now it does have a built-in speaker system. It's actually very powerful. It's 40 watts, 20 watts per side, and you can definitely fill a living room with a party going on in it and still have plenty of power left over. You could do a gig at a coffee house or a small lounge and not have to worry about bringing a PA with you. In the meanwhile, all the sounds you're hearing today are coming directly from the instrument's line outputs, the left and right line outs, and being recorded directly into a recorder. Now this one does have Bluetooth. Now it's Bluetooth audio and Bluetooth MIDI. So there's a lot of apps you can use out there where you just MIDI it up with Bluetooth and you're good to go. As far as audio, I just mentioned how good the speakers are on this. So you can transmit your audio stuff from your MP3 player or whatever it is you're listening to and play it through here. If you're on a break at a gig, perfect to have it streamed right through here during the break. And also, this has the standard five pin DIN legacy MIDI jacks. It has the in and the out. So you can use this with pretty much anything. You wanna hook it up to another MIDI device, you can do that. It also has the USB, so you can hook that up to your computer and do MIDI that way with your DAW. It's got a built-in recorder, one track, up to 5,000 notes, and up to three different songs that you can store. I'll be getting to that a little bit later in the video. Also has a metronome, and not only that, it's got a rhythm thing here so that you can actually play with a drummer. They've got a hundred different presets for that. I will be getting into that in this video too. Now, so let's start out with what it comes with besides the keyboard. Comes with this awesome clear acrylic music rest. Just hooks right in. You don't even know it's there, but it works perfectly. It doesn't really jiggle around too much like others do, and the music definitely is going to stay put. It's not going to fall off. So I really like that feature too. And the other thing, now a lot of digital pianos or portable pianos or stage pianos don't come with any pedals at all. And if they do, they give you a cheap little square shaped plastic box, which is nothing more than a switch. Kawhi, however, gives you their Kawhi F10H. This is not just a switch. This is a half damper, and that comes in so handy when you're using this as a pianist. A half damper is a must for a professional pianist. And if you are a professional pianist, I mean, I am, but all I use is the damper, but some of them like the standard three pedals, and you can go ahead and buy Kawhi's optional three pedal unit with this so that you can have all three pedals available to you. All right, so let's go over the back panel first, the connections. Uh, there's a couple of rows, an upper and a lower row, I'd like to call it. In the upper row, you've got the power supply or DC input. You've got the USB-B jack, and that's usually for a cable to connect from the Kawhi to your computer. Then you have the standard legacy MIDI in and out jacks. And in the lower row, you've got the left and right quarter inch TS line outputs and a 1 8 inch TRS auxiliary input jack. Then there's the quarter inch damper pedal input jack. There's also a proprietary jack for the Kawhi triple pedal. 
And on the front, you've got a couple of headphone jacks. One is a quarter inch size and the other is eighth inch size. So it accommodates pretty much any pair of headphones that you have. And you can use them both at the same time. If you're in a student teacher type of thing or just playing with a friend and it's late, you don't want to wake anybody up, you can use the headphones for that. It's great. And up here, there's an input tray for a USB thumb drive or a flash drive or memory stick, whatever you want to call it. But it's right there in the front, which makes it very convenient. All right, next, let's go through the physical buttons and knobs and whatever. Actually, there's no knobs. It's all buttons with the exception of the master volume. That is actually a slider. So starting on the left, and this is broken up into logical sections. So we've got two keys here, transpose and split. These are used often by a pianist if you're with a, a band or if you're accompanying a singer. If you know something, how to play it in C, but your singer wants to sing it in B flat, that's where the transpose comes in. You simply hold the transpose and hit B flat, and all of a sudden your keyboard is in B flat. So you're playing in C, but you're hearing it in B flat. So, and if I go back, same keys, back to where it was. So it's easy to transpose. What key you want it in? Hold down the transpose, hit the key. Simple as that. When you're done, hit transpose, hold it down, and hit middle C. Split, also super easy, where we can split the keyboard and set the split point as well. So I got a piano going here right now. I'm gonna hit split, okay. I've got a wood bass on the bottom. I happen to have a piano on top. Now I can change that and I can also change the split point too, but So very cool. And when I'm done, I just press split again and I'm back to the full keyboard. There's also a demo mode. If you hold both of these together, it goes into a demo. Listen to this. Okay, so there are 34 different voices on here. And this demo mode covers 24 of them. I'm putting together a video that actually allows you to hear the full demo in the full 24 voices that this offers in demo mode. So that's really cool. The next section, this is where you choose what instrument you want to hear. Now these, piano one, piano two, electric piano, organ, harpsy and mallets, strings and choir and bass, those are the categories. And each one of these has the instruments within. So on piano one, you'll notice I have concert, SK Concert Grand right now. That's a Shigeru Concert Grand. If I press the same thing again, I go to the next instrument within that category, and in this case, it's an EX concert grand. And the next one would be a jazz clean. Mm -hmm. 
Next one is a warm grand. Next one takes me right back to the beginning. So there were four pianos in the piano one category. If I go to the piano two category, there should be another four pianos. This is a modern piano. So we've got that. Uh, pressing it again, I go to a, a rock piano. Nice sounding for rock. Cuts through the mix real well, too. Upright piano. And the next one is a pop grand. And then back to my modern piano. So as long as we're doing this, let's just go through really quick with the rest of, there's only 34 instruments in there. And I've covered eight already. So <laughs> let's go to electric piano category. 60s E piano two. Oh, wait a second. Okay, well, let's start with that. And let's go to the 60s E piano. I think we just did the E piano too. Modern E piano. And we're back to the e-piano too. Now, what's great, let me just move ahead a little bit because Kawhi has put into here this section, amp, effects, and reverb. Reverb is self-explanatory. I use a little bit of, of it on every piano to, so it's not so dry. So that's self-explanatory, but when you're using an electric piano, now you get to choose what type of amplifier you want. So in this case, look at this. I, I've got a as case two. I can turn that on and off. If I hold it, now I can change what kind of case or cabinet. This is what's available to me here. And there's all kinds of other parameters too. I'm not gonna get into that now. Just know that it's there. And the same thing with effects. Here's a phaser. It's on right now. This is one type of phaser. Here's a classic phaser. It might be better than this. So you can use it for that. And there's others. So that's just a quick handling of this section, just so that you know it's there. It's very powerful. You've got a lot of control here, especially when it comes to electric pianos. And let's go over to the organs. Here's a church organ, really nice.
really nice. I can't tell you how much I love it. So I really don't want to play all that. I want to get into the, but this is what I mean. It just says, play me. And I love doing that. So that was a church organ. Here's a jazz organ. Here's a, a draw bar organ. So really nice and you can set, you can control this and, and kind of tailor it, not with actual draw bars or anything like that. And then there's a ballad organ. And principal, listen to this. I wonder how many people remember that. And we're back to the church organ. Next one is the harpsichord and mallets. Vibraphone. Clavy. Marimba. And back to harpsichord. Last one is the strings and choir. Slow strings. And a string pad. Warm strings. Choir. Square pad. New Age Pad. And a string ensemble. back to slow strings. So let me just go back to piano. So these were the categories that I went through again, and this button to the left of categories grouped with it is registration. So when you're in the registration mode, anything you come up with, you tailor a certain sound, or um, maybe you've put together a layer or a split that you want to save, 
you can actually do that with registrations where you can use these buttons to save it. And I forget, I think there was like 28 registrations or something like that. And once you save it, you can recall it just as easily in registration mode. So if you're at a performance, you just go ahead and recall whatever registration you want for that particular performance. All right, and I've gone over these effects buttons here. The next section is a recorder. So you can record one song, <laughs> okay? But it's really cool because what you can do is you can play along with that song. And you can use this as a scratch pad or you, you're inspired, you came up with an idea for a song and you wanna commit that to something like this. You don't want to have, you don't have the time to go and grab a recording device or hook this up or whatever. You just want to hit record and go. So that's what this is for. And when I hit that, we're in standby mode. It won't start until I start playing. And you can also have a metronome on while you do this. If you prefer to play to the metronome, it won't record that. stop that and let's just quickly play back what we got and play along with it. So that's really cool. And that's just kind of an idea for a song, but you can actually use this if, if you're learning something, you can record the left hand, and then when you play it back, you add the right hand to it, or vice versa. Makes it an easier way to learn than rather committing both hands at the same time and getting confused, but this is a way, it's just another way, it's a tool to help you learn. And it's also a tool to help you record your thoughts and ideas and maybe even come up with a song. And again, you've got the rhythm drums to help you with your accompaniments. And speaking of rhythm, And you've got all kinds of different rhythms here. You can change the tempo. You can actually change the volume. It's a low volume now. Make it a little louder. All right. Okay, let's go to the next rhythm. Eight, beat two. Beat three. We got in sixteenth beat two, beat three, now let's just skip over it to show you there's a lot more than just a simple rhythm. We got something here with a cowbell. Needs more cowbell. Let's exit that and basically know there's a hundred preset rhythms like that. And playing along to a rhythm is so much more fun than playing along to a boring metronome. You know, a metronome might be the standard, but a rhythm is so much nicer. And it gives you more motivation to get things right and play with the beat. Okay. Then there's USB, that's self-explanatory, but basically 
Well, you, you put a USB thumb drive or a flash drive or a, a memory stick, whatever you want to call it. You put it in there and you can save your stuff to that, registrations and songs and all kinds of other stuff. The master volume, uh, this is a slider left to right, and I've only got it probably one third of the way up. Now, be advised that this controls not only the speakers, but also the line outputs at the same time. So be advised of that. And then the power switch on and off. And I think uh, I, I mentioned layers, but basically to have a layer, you basically hold down any two of these instrument keys. So I've got piano one. First, let me choose what piano I want. In this case, I want the SK Concert Grand. And let's say I want an organ with that. So let me choose which organ. Yeah, let's make it a, a church organ. Okay. So if I hold the organ and piano at the same time, it shows I have a church organ and an SK Concert Grand at the same time. <laughs> Can control the volume be for each one of these. You might want the church organ not so loud and maybe the piano a little louder. So that kind of thing. And then you just exit. And then you just press piano again and you're back to piano across the board. And that pretty much concludes the overview review of this. You can do a lot with this. I am so impressed with this at 32 pounds and the way it sounds is just, it's phenomenal. I could definitely see me using this as my portable gigging piano for when I have solo piano gigs. I can even use it if I'm gigging with a band as long as I have all the instruments I need within the 34 instruments that are included here. But if I want more instrumentation that's not on here, then of course I'd have to switch to another kind of uh, keyboard. But for this, especially if you're a pianist, and if you're looking for something that's for your living room, more of a furniture type of piece, and also has functionality with this quality. You're in luck because Kawai makes a furniture style stand for this. So when you're at home, you've got this on the stand. And when you're away on a gig, you just simply remove it from the stand, take it with you, put it in your gig bag, and you're good to go. And again, this should fit in just about any car. So I hope you've enjoyed this Piano Man Chuck. Peace out. Thanks for watching.